What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Automated. John Levesque here, your host, with my friends Pranav and Kent, as always. What's going on, guys? You are awfully Seahawks out today. Is there a game? Yes, yeah, Seahawks won. Seahawks won. Did they win? Oh, that's that's a rare occurrence. I guess you should celebrate. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it only happened three out of three, but but yeah, it's, it's pretty rare. Yeah. Is it three out of three? Oh, good for them. That's good. That's good. I, not, not Russell good. Wilson. <laughs> that's true. I was reading something the other day. He's thrown like a hundred touchdowns in three games so far this season, right? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. I think he has a thousand plus <laughs> yards and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. So today. We have gotten a lot of comments. Our most commented video was the one that Pranav did about UI flows and SAP. We had a lot of comments with specific asks about, can it do this? Can it do that? We should do more. And so Pranav agreed to come back and do some more, but there's a twist. We now have a brand new Power Automate desktop. And so we're gonna change up the methodology and show you how this is all possible now and more right? And more than we did before with Power Automate Desktop. Yeah. There is always one more thing. Okay, awesome. All right, so Pranav, <laughs> go ahead, man. Take it away. Let's do some more SAP. I know the people are hungry for it. All right, let me share my screen. I think we were ordering what pizza was last time. Wings. Wings, yes. Wings. wings. I know. I yeah, was we're just long starting. overdue for some wings, John. We're long overdue. We are. We are. We should travel to Connecticut. I've been talking about it. The best wings on the planet live in Connecticut in the USA. <laughs> so, yeah, John, this is a new tool that we launched in at Ignite. Um, it improves our uh, RPA uh, story, where now we have this rich editor, which has a lot of these functionalities, and some of these are uh, uh, users were sort of asking for it as well. So let's see how we can get started by recording a simple uh, RPA flow, which uh, automates some of the key SAP interactions. And we we'll look at how we can uh, trigger this flow uh, from the Power Automate service as well. Okay. Uh, so we'll start by launching uh, this Power Automate desktop. This is a desktop console that you can launch. So you, you can now build uh, flows, which are stored in the Power Automate service right from your desktop as well for your RPA scenarios. So you can oh, yeah. say, Go to the description. There's a link where you can download it. Yeah. So I'll start with John 11. Maybe a, this is the 11th wing that'll, that we'll order. And uh, I'm creating this flow in this uh, Parcat development environment. Uh, so we've got an environment picker as well. And you can choose to uh, create your flows in, in different environments. And what's being launched over here is the Power Automate Desktop Designer. And this is the design surface which you can use to record any of your actions. And as you can see, it's a full-fledged designer. You can record both web and desktop applications in the same flow. And if you remember in UI flows, you had to create two different kinds of flows for one for web and one for desktop. And it has like 300 plus actions and some of which, which we'll use now. And it also has a repository of input output variables and then screens that you can capture. So this is a full-blown editor for building RPA uh, processes. And we'll have links to getting started with, with Power Automate Desktop. So let's go ahead and, and start recording SAP. You know, the first step that we have is uh, in, in terms of uh, selecting the server. And I could have gone and sort of done the desktop recorder uh, experience where I could have said desktop recording and then I could have clicked around and stuff. But I wanted to show something else given what our users were asking for were very specific actions. So instead of recording, I'm just gonna start, uh, you know, uh, selecting steps that I wanna do on the in the SAP GUI. So the first step I wanna do is uh, click, where I wanna click the name of that uh, SAP server. So here I'm going add new element. So this can be used to capture any element or any uh, window that you have in your RPA process. So here I'm capturing the SAP uh, window where I'm selecting the S4 HANA 3. And I can then also determine what actions do I want. Do I want a left click? Do I want a double click? I also have these rich capabilities on, uh, you know, what happens in terms of error conditions, uh, what happens. I can also retry if I want uh, with some of these actions. 
and uh, it gives me some uh, error handling capabilities, which is specific to each action. So if I launch a new app and I look at this advanced dialogue, it'll have different kind of uh, error handling uh, strategies that I have. So, you know, this sort of gives you a, a very uh, depth, in-depth control in terms of how to handle errors. So let's save this. So this is the first click uh, action, which is going to launch a new dialogue where I can then enter my uh, username and password. And uh, to do that, I'm going to look for an action which lets me populate uh, text field values. And here, I'm going to go to the UI automation form filling. As you can see, it has a lot of these interactions. Once you get a text value, you can also perform certain operations on it. I'm going to go ahead and populate these uh, text values. So the first text that I want to populate is the username. And uh, I can say done. I can specify the username over here. And uh, what in a, in a real world scenario, what will happen is these usernames will be passed from your API flows where they can be looked up from Azure Key Vault. So there's a secure integration already in place for you. In this, in this video, we're just going to cover the basics. I'm just going to hard code this value. But you can define these input variables over here. And then these input variables can be filled by values coming out of Key Vault. And let's use this action again to populate the password as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and capture the password field. And I'm going to click Done. And I'm going to enter my uh, super secret password, which is very safe. Uh, and then what I can do is uh, it, we also have a lot of uh, keyboard actions. So you can send keys as well. As you know, SAP has a lot of shortcut keys. Uh, and instead of doing clicks, you can press Enter key. Uh, so this can define your, uh, your Enter behavior as well. And so let's go ahead and uh, try running uh, this flow that we've built so far. <clears throat> and now what you're seeing over here is it's a, the development process is very iterative where I, you know, a few steps. I can go ahead and quickly execute those steps and sort of see what's happening. And uh, in the background, if I wanted to, I could even pause uh, the process. And now it's entered. And so now I've basically logged into SAP over here as well. And, uh, and now sort of I can go ahead and you know, drive my SAP interactions uh, by either entering the transaction code over here, or I can even run uh, VB script if I wanted to. So I can write VB script that can uh, manipulate the SAP DOM uh, in this case. Uh, so for example, I have this VB script which uh, is going to enter a transaction code over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and log out. And if you remember, transaction codes in SAP are, are, are ways to define different processes that you want to do. So for example, invoice processing, you know, there's a transaction code of Miro. Uh, so there are a lot of different uh, business processes that you can mimic uh, by entering the transaction code in SAP. And so what we're showing over here is, you know, uh, there are different ways you can drive the SAP GUI. One is you can record. The other one is you can enter sort of manual actions. Third one is uh, you know doing some SAP scripting, which allows you to you know sort of have very rich control uh, over your SAP GUI. And we also have these new constructs where you can wait uh, for a certain event to happen. In this case, uh, you can wait for a time bound index, or you can wait for a certain window to pop up, or you can wait for a certain window content to happen. So let's say you know in a certain window, uh, you want to see whether this window has popped up or not. So in this case, let's say if you if you want to look for exit uh, value, then you can also sort of do that. And again, you have a very rich experience in terms of what retry logic you want to have. What kind of error handling conditions do you want to have? Do you want to time out? And you can also define variables uh, that then you can inspect later on in your flow as well. Or you can define subflows, which is think of them as those sort of child flows or functions that you can call uh, within your flow as well. Yeah. So just to sort of recap, you know, this uh, this tool is very very powerful, where uh, you can sort of 
record actions and perform advanced operations in VB script and also have some wait conditions where you're waiting uh, for certain, certain elements to, to show up and you can have error, error handling conditions as well. And once you save this uh, particular flow, this will get saved up in the Power Automate service. So you can create a flow, for example, which can run on a schedule. In this case, uh, let's say it's running every day. And then you can uh, connect it through the UI flow connector. There's a new option that you will see, run a flow built by Power Automate desktop that you can choose. And then you can choose your flow, which you just built, John 11. You can choose how to run it, either attended or unattended. And then you can sort of start retrieving your you know, username, passwords from Key Vault and then passing it through and through. So this is a pretty rich experience with the Power Automate desktop you know, that users can now use to uh, automate their SAP applications much more reliably. This is nice. What do you man. think about it, John? Did we address all Yo. the that we had? I mean, it's just like, I, I don't know if we addressed every comment, but I think what we did here is we showed how the process is now a million times easier, where I think last time, you know, even watching you kind of click through it, you could tell it wasn't easy, right? You had to get things just right. You had to manipulate things and, and try it again a second time to get it how you wanted it. This this was just smooth. This just this just worked, you know, it, it, it found every field it needed and it just seems that much more elegant. And, and I think another key thing too is now how you can tie together a schedule to call one of these Power Automate desktop created flows like that, that end piece right there, the simplicity of that even, how now the API scheduled trigger can just run a flow every day or every minute or however often you need it. Um, all of this coming together is just, yeah, the, the only thing I can say is just, it's so much more refined. I know that's a great point. Like, and, and just for our users knowledge also, like the Power Automate desktop is just an evolution of the Win Automation product. But this rich integration that John just mentioned is a super critical where all your logs are stored in the cloud, all your RBAC happens in the cloud. And it's, it's a centrally managed and governed environment but where you can leverage all of our API flows and, and schedule-based operations. And then, uh, yeah, last time I remember, I think we had a lot of issues sort of recording and, and, and replaying it reliably. But like here, I think that's a, good, that's a good observation, John, that you had, like if you were able to uh, sort of, you know, pick up fields and then enter values and then and try this development in a, Iterative manner, which is what a lot of developers are used to, you know, in Visual Studio, where they write code, you know, break points, and then they run part of it, and they start adding more and more code to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like that's a, a big difference from before, right? Like if you needed to like edit your script, it was pretty difficult to try to like stitch all of that together. Whereas here, number one, you don't have to record if you don't want to in many circumstances, but if you did need to insert a, a step between two and three, you could easily do that, whether that's a recorded step or whether that's dropping an action in. And I think that's that's huge for developer productivity. So uh, yeah, I think that's a, one of the biggest benefits of, of this approach and this tool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, really, I'm really impressed with it. I think the team has done amazing work. I think uh, just to, I, the amount of time really too, you know, being on this side of things and kind of seeing how fast this has all come together is really impressive. Definitely, like yeah. the the acquisition took place in May, right? Yeah. Naturally, it takes time to get people, you know, onboarded into the new organization, and then you've got engineering teams that uh, hadn't worked together. Now they're working together. Common goal, like super impressive to see uh, yeah. how quickly that's all come together. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, you guys at home, you know what to do. It's time to start automating your SAP implementations. Go ahead and download Power Automate Desktop. Try it out for yourself. There's links in the description. Uh, see what you think. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think of the tool. Let us know if you want to see specific tutorials. And, and honestly, you know what I would love to see too? Some of your victories. If you go ahead and automate SAP and knock some annoying work out of your way, let us know so we can celebrate it with you and talk about it on the show. It means a lot to us. 
to see people save time, save energy, gain efficiency, all that goodness from, from things like this. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. All right, cool. All right, that's it oh, for huh. this episode, my friends. Ah, oh, boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for today's episode. Uh, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and click like, click subscribe. I have, I am big on the screen right now and that's okay. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Much love from us.